negative cases. Well, so uh, we are doing here in the way we're looking at emotions. Um, we we tend to uh, look at our lives more from the point of view of all the negative stuff than the positive stuff. Somehow, um, and even you know when you go out there and look at self help books, they will often be concentrated more on that than on the positive. But at any rate, let's get back to your little diary. So you've looked at. Uh, the different mm, emotions that you've kind of gone through during the week. You may see a pattern, you may not, but what you probably will see, (laughs) because of course, remember, you were to write down all the emotions you've noticed, you probably will see that a humongous percentage of the emotions you wrote down were more, more on the negative side than on the positive side. And that tells you about your continuum from zero to 10. Most of your week was probably spent around the five, maybe if you're lucky, six mark. Right. Well, that's not freedom. And that's Mm. the whole point of what we're talking about here. Okay. So now you've spent a week doing your diary. You've you've written down your emotions. You've seen with what kind of frequency you're probably experiencing them. So the week after that you've done this, you begin to, as soon as you notice one of these emotions that is going to take you from your starting point, which might have been a five or a six, to maybe a four and a half or, you know, whatever, lower than where you were, you use the awareness of this emotion as your impetus to do something to rather than go down to go up. Hmm. That is how you use your emotions to get yourself freedom. And it's actually quite simple. It means you must become aware of your emotions, which means you also should become aware of your body because frequently your body will tell you about it before your actual heart, shall we say, tells you. Right. Or your brain then says, oh, you know, right. I'm really angry. <laughs> so, <laughs> or you make the logical interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So so before that happens, you may notice this dreadful tightening in your stomach, or you may notice your heart is pounding like crazy, or you may notice a reddening of your cheeks, but all of this in a more of a negative way, or heat rising over the back of your neck. Uh, in your temples, heat again. You know, I'm not yeah. talking about menopausal hot flushes. Right, right. <laughs> I'm talking about the way people feel when they get very angry or when they get very jealous right, or when right. they get very even envious in, a say, a work situation where someone is being promoted and you are not or praised and you are not, etc., etc. So as soon as you notice on any level of any kind a an emotion that is pulling you downwards, that is the place where you need to be able to say to yourself, and you might want to start practicing this on weekends rather than <laughs> during the week, simply because you have a little extra time. It's more relaxing too, yes. sometimes. In order to gain this awareness. Now, so you say to me, okay, so I'm, I'm spiraling down into anger or jealousy or envy or, or any of the negative emotions or despondency. Um, I'm spiraling down. How on earth do I stop the spiral just because I'm aware of the fact that I am spiraling down? Especially because let's point out that often it's very comfortable because you've done it so many times. It, it, you feel yourself sinking into anger and it feels quite like this is where I'm supposed to be. Well, this is what we've talked about mm. with the pain body that, right, that right. Tolle talks about, mm-hmm. right? Or the emotional <laughs> body that Chris Griscom talks about. Mm. Uh, yes, you you like to go there because it feels very comfortable because you're so familiar it's with gonna it. It's going to feel strange at first to go a different direction. It'll feel almost wrong in a way. I mean, you're, you're out of context. It not only feels strange, you will rebel against it. Yeah. You will not want to change the status quo. Right. Um, part of that has to do with the great familiarity of going in the other direction. Mm-hmm. And part of that has to do with the fact that it requires an effort. Yeah, that's true. Okay, and and, and any kind of an effort uh, has to be developed um, with a little bit of discipline, a little bit of a, you know, growing a muscle, as we sometimes say. And so, um, but, but the first thing, in that moment where you notice the downward spiral and you remember this particular talk show and you say to yourself, okay, this is where this woman is telling me that I have, <laughs> you know, I could do something. What do I do? Well, the first thing you do is to say to yourself, I have a choice. 
I have a choice. This information that my body, uh, my heart, my whatever it is that's giving you the information that you're spiraling down is there for a reason. And the reason is not to f- continue feeling worse. Right. The reason is to be, make me become aware of what is going on and that at this particular point in time, I can go down the continuum or up the continuum. Right. Down right. towards zero or up towards 10. Right. And if you don't think you can do it, stop for a moment and think of these people who've done it in prison or in concentration camps or in the middle of terrible illness. I mean, there are people out there. You can find all kinds of stories to read. Trust me, I can give everybody a list of these great books of people's personal experiences in in gripping their freedom in the middle of terrible circumstances. Absolutely. And Mm. these stories are inspiring. But, you know, uh, uh, many times when I tell people about these stories, they kind of look at me quite dismissively as if to say, well, you know, these people knew more than I did or are stronger than I am or have more wherewithal um, on an inner level at their disposition than, than I than I do and I simply could not do what they do or it just doesn't apply to my life and of course it applies right uh, these are all examples of things that can go on I mean you know <clears throat> we can look at somebody who does what you do Brenda in your life with your four children and here you are at the radio station doing this and all the things that your life obviously entails time-wise and then we can imagine um, a human being who perhaps uh, has uh, um, uh, 24-7 household help no children doesn't have to cook uh, plays perhaps golf all day and now all of a sudden we're asking her to learn uh, a new language maybe Spanish because she's just moved here and she can't figure out how to fit this into her day and you know you and I might laugh at this uh, and yet one does have to put oneself into that person's shoes they are used to having the day a certain way and now they're expected to fill in an extra hour where do they pull that from Mm -hmm. we would have no problem in figuring this one out but somebody else that isn't doesn't have that muscle developed first has to develop it time's a funny thing isn't it how how plastic it is if you know how to um shape it and right you know, right do stuff with it but but a lot of people are locked into this thing of I, I learned a long time ago that every time you hear yourself say I don't have time that is your alarm bell going off because you have time for everything you have you you make time for whatever you want so it's a choice you absolutely know, you have to tell yourself no I'm choosing not to do this it's really hard to tell someone that it's uh, easier to say, I'm sorry, I don't have time. It's, it's really hard to say, I am choosing not to have lunch with you on Thursday. <laughs> so, no, it's easier to say, sorry, I'm busy, I'm too busy. Sometimes I'll let myself say that, but then I have to remind myself inside, you're obviously choosing something else. Well, in my case, it's pretty simple because I'm choosing either to go to work or take care of my family. <laughs> so don't take it offensively, anyone, if I don't have time. It's, it's true. But you know, it's, it, you know what I mean. Mm, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. So when, when you get to that point where you recognize, okay, I'm... I'm <clears throat> On the downward spiral, I'm feeling emotion such and such. Uh, And here is where this woman is telling me that I have a choice. Okay, let me stop at least with that thought. And let's look a little bit at that thought. At least we're not going to go down the downward spiral as much because we're going to sit and think about the thought of I have a choice. All right. Okay, I agree. I do have a choice. I don't really like the idea, though. It's more Mm -hmm. comfortable going down there. But okay, let me look at the thought I have a choice. What are my choices? Well, there's the one that I know that's going down there. That's one choice. And another choice could be not to go down there. But how do I not go down there? That, of course, is the part where uh, I've mentioned on many, many of these shows, there are a number of things you can do that are relatively easy at 